Okay, so I'm going to show you how to take a UI that you built in Illustrator uh, or any other vector creator program and animate in After Effects. I'm going to start from the very basics. Uh, it's going to be a lot of uh, uninteresting things, uh, but this is all about the tech and the pipeline used to do it, uh, not necessarily the results. So what you can see here, I've, I've drawn a simple square in Illustrator, giving it a super sleek tech feel with this cut corner here. Um, it's just a box uh, with a stroke on it. I'm going to save this out as an EPS, call it box. Version number doesn't really matter. I'm going to go to After Effects. I'm going to go to File, Import, File, import that EPS we just made. Over here on the left, the project window, that's basically your library of all the stuff that you have in a project. Uh, I'm going to create a new composition in the center here. This new composition is basically an artboard. It's basically the canvas that you work on. Uh, width and height, I'm going to make it 1080p. 30 frames a second is fine. You can go 60, doesn't matter. Uh, duration, real short duration just for this demo, just 10 seconds with a black background. Here we go on the bottom. Uh, bottom window is my timeline, which also doubles as your layers. Um, it works just like in every other uh, animation program. But if you're not familiar, obviously Photoshop, Sketch, anything else is just a layers, layers panel. I'm going to grab my box and drag it onto the canvas right from the project window. So right now, when you import an EPS, After Effects just treats it. Um, it's still a vector object, but you can't play with any of the attributes. You can't do really anything with it. Um, you can't alter it, do anything. So the first thing we want to do, right click on this EPS in the layers panel, go to create, create shapes from vector layer. It's going to duplicate the layer, but at the same time, extrapolate and extract, not extrapolate, extract all the uh, shapes out of that EPS and turn them into shape objects uh, that After Effects can read better. This can get very complex if you're dealing with complicated shapes. Um, a square, there's not much to a square. Uh, if I tree out this um, this layer, I can see kind of all the attributes to it. So I can see my transform attributes, which is basically how I can uh, alter it. So I can change the position of it here. I can change the scale of it. And I do that just by clicking on one of these, clicking and holding and dragging. Um, but the contents as well. Um, so I have content, my group, and then in that group are a handful of different shape objects. So I have my fill, uh, my stroke that we did in, in Illustrator and the path that actually makes up the shape. The path works just like any other shape layer you would see anywhere else. It has anchors tied to it. And I can grab these anchors, uh, I can grab these anchor points and drag them around and alter it. Um, I couldn't do this before I um, turned them into shape layers. You know, when I originally drag, drug it in, I couldn't do this. So that's why I had to break it apart. So it gives you access to make alterations, like I said. Uh, but what we're going to do is something really basic. Uh, we're going to animate it opening up, like a, a boot up intro sequence. Um, I'm not going to dive super deep into how animation works, um, but basically uh, I can I can scrub along my timeline here, click and drag uh, to go through different to go through different portions of the timeline. I'm going to stop at one second here. I'm going to open up my path, uh, and if I click this little stopwatch here, it'll create a keyframe. That's basically saying like at this point in time, this is what the path uh, and all the anchor points will look like. Uh, so at one second, it will look like what you're seeing here. I'm going to go to two seconds. Uh, and on the left side here, you see a little diamond. I'm going to tap that, and that's going to insert another keyframe, basically saying at, at the two second mark, this is what the, the next state will look like. I'm going to hop back to the one second one, grab a few of these anchor points, and just, just slide it in like this. Uh, what After Effects is going to do is interpolate between these two keyframes. It's going to uh, automatically create the, the differences. So as I scrub through my timeline, I go from my one second state, which is this closed closed view to my two second state, which is more open. You know, that's what we're looking for here. A uh, real basic animation, op an opening animation. I'm gonna scale up these, scale these both up just a little bit. Grab these anchors. I think that's good. Maybe shrink it up a little bit so it matches. Wait, I went the wrong way, this way. Whatever. Okay, so I have it uh, starting from uh, pretty close to opening. Um, what you'll see now is is I have my uh, this layer exists throughout the entire timeline. However, nothing really happens uh, up until the one second mark. 
So I don't really want to see it up until it starts animating open. I don't want to see the static frame here. So I'm going to go to the one second mark and I can actually grab uh, the two ends of this layer uh, and adjust where it shows up on the timeline. If I drag it past the one second mark where our current timeline is, uh, it disappears because right now it's not visible in that area. Um, but I'm going to basically drag it up to that one second mark. So anything up until that point, it's not there, not there. Hit one second, great, now it's here, and now I can animate in. So if I play this, great. This is a terrible, terrible animation. This is a linear animation. Uh, it, it's uh, going at the same rate throughout the entirety of the animation. I'm going to highlight these. Uh, you can click and drag. I'm going to highlight these, these anchor points. Uh, Jesus, what are these called? Keyframes. <laughs> I'm going to click and drag and open up these keyframes. There's a little window here called the graph editor. I'm going to tap that. It's basically going to show me how my interpolation, how my uh, my easings is working, how my animations are working. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to wrap your head around. However, uh, so right now, if I start at the one second mark, I can see that between my two keyframes, uh, it will be moving at 1.0 units a second. Units is an arbitrary state, an arbitrary uh, quantity. Um, but you can see it's, it's, it's a straight line. So throughout the entirety of the animation, it's just moving at a straight constant clip. That looks bad. Uh, what you want to do, I'm going to grab this keyframe here. I'm going to drag it down here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to backtrack that. I'm going to right click this, go to keyframe assistant, go to easy ease in. This is basically After Effects uh, pre-built in way of saying, I'm going to ease in this animation. Ease in means, uh, if, you, if you look at how it's been altered here, uh, my timeline, uh, uh, my animation will start at one, uh, one unit a second. It's going to quickly ramp up to 1.3 units a second, and then slowly taper down into eventually come to a, a, a smooth stop. It's going to stop at 0.0, .0 units a second. What that basically means, if I play this back, it's a little bit hard to see here, <clears throat> but it starts off quick and starts to slow down towards the end. Uh, this is called easing. This makes your animations feel a little bit more professional, more crisp, more natural, um, just a little more put together. Uh, this is very, this is the, the minimum amount you should do. Uh, just like anchor points in any other object, there's anchor points to these keyframes. I can click and drag these around as I see fit and alter this animation. I'm gonna click and drag it way over to the left. Now if you look at the curve, you'll see it's gonna quickly, quickly, very quickly go it to four units a second. So if you remember the original pace, now it's four times that speed. It's gonna do that, it's gonna, right out of the gate, it's gonna go real fast and then quickly slow down. It's gonna quickly go back down, 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 down to zero. I'll play this animation. It's so much snappier now, boom. Like that feels good. It's like it's booting up, it's going quick. <coughs> so there it is, that's our, that's our basics of our boot up animation of our intro animation. I'm gonna hop back, I'm gonna toggle this again, go back to my original timeline. Boom. All right, uh, I feel like that I, this isn't the color the colors that I want. Um, thankfully, since I broke out this object, this is just another shape object with inside After Effects. Uh, I can tree out this stroke and this fill, uh, these fill colors. I'm gonna give this a, a half-life half -life feel. Uh, I know they have a classic kind of, uh, they have a gold color, I'm gonna drop the opacity down on the, on the fill. And then give it a, a real vibrant, not a vibrant, but a little digital yellow. Uh, so there's, there's my <coughs> high-tech UI for Half-Life. Again, um, I'm going to close up these attributes. Again, all I did was change the fill and the stroke. Um, my, my path, my keyframes are still going to retain exactly how they worked before. Pretty cool. Um, so what I want to do now is uh, I want to I want to build this a little bit. Um, right now I'm just I'm working on a single layer. Uh, it's on the main canvas, but I want to make some alterations to it. So what I'm going to do now is turn this shape object into a pre a pre composition. Pre composition is basically a smart object in Photoshop or uh, a symbol in Sketch. Uh, it's a, it's I'm going to pack this layer into um, into its own folder. I'm going to right click on it, go to pre compose. Um, call, it, call it box. So what I've done now, I'm still on my main canvas now. However, I've turned um, my my single layer into into a, a pre comp into its own separate folder. Um, just like in Photoshop, I can double click on this layer, 
and I can open up this new pre-comp. So now I'm in an entirely new Canvas workspace. I'm in the separate pan Canvas workspace. workspace. Um, however, it's a huge, it's a huge Canvas workspace. I don't need all this space. All I have is a little window in here. Um, I have it opening up. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit. I'm going to tap this uh, region of interest box here, and I'm going to just drag it over the stuff that I need. I'm going to go to Composition, Trim Comp to Region of Interest. Basically, going to scale down my my folder comp. Uh, and just give me the, the, the workspace that I need. I'm only working in this tiny little window, so it's all good. Actually, it looks like it's extending down a little bit too far. So I can go to Composition, Composition Settings, and just bring up my height just a little bit to make sure I'm holding. I'm getting every all the data in there. Boom. So you can see I'm, I'm in a, uh, a breadcrumb trail right now. I'm in my I'm pre-comp is the main comp that we have. It's the main canvas we have, and I'm in the box pre-comp. Uh, so I'm going to hop back one, go back to the master. So now I have this pre-comp here, my box pre-comp. What's great about this is that I can, well, let's see. I'm going to turn this into a 3D object. So I'll go back to the layers panel, click this little box right here. Boom, I'm now a 3D object. What does that mean? Well, now I can, it's still, it's still a, a 2D drawn object, but I can alter uh, it in 3D space. So I'm going to tree out the transform controls in that layer. And now I can adjust... Before I could only adjust, I didn't show you, but you can only adjust the X and Y rotation. Now I can adjust the Z rotation. Um, these don't quite map to how they might be mapping in your head, however. Um, if I just click and drag, I can experiment. Uh, this one kind of, this rotation direct kind of from the top to the bottom rotates it in forward towards the camera. Uh, this Y rotation, as you can see, kind of rotates it in a Y, but towards a, towards a different angle. So what I can easily do is make this look like it's in 3D space. I've, it's just a 2D object still, but I've altered it into, and by tweaking it, by tweaking the radi rotation, it makes it look like it's 3D a little bit. So uh, since this is a pre-comp, I'm still retaining all the stuff inside the pre-comp, which is to say all my animations and everything that I've done. So I can still play it, have it open, and now it's, but now it's doing in 3D space. Um, so there's that much more of, of, of depth of interest here. Let's take it one step further. I'm going to grab this uh, and duplicate the layer. I'm not going to create a new part of it. I'm just creating an instance of this pre-comp. Um, so I, <coughs> excuse me. So now I have uh, two instances. So I can move this around as I want. And these are the, these are duplicates of each other. They they if I dive into either one and edit the pre-comp, they're going to be reflected uh, wherever wherever this this box pre-comp is done. So if I double-click this and go back into it, and I can adjust. Uh, I just decided, you know, my my fill color, half-life colors are more, uh, more, more purple. Once I hop back out, all the instances are reflected as such. Looks like Crown Royal. Uh, uh, and the yellow matches half-life a little, a little closer. So I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit. So what we can do here um, with relative ease, uh, I can drag one of these, these little arrows. Let me drag the position of it. I'm gonna go back in, in Z space. So I'm gonna actually go push it back away from the camera. Uh, so what that can easily do, maybe go down just a little bit. If I change the opacity of this, I can kind of bait it out, give it a little more, a little more of that depth. And again, because these are all working off the same pre-comp, when I play the back, uh, all the all those pre-comps, and no matter what I do to it on the surface, those changes are still retained within the pre-comp itself. And again, I can go in here and make it purple again, and both these would would turn purple, uh, but the outside layers. <clears throat> would retain the, the, the light and opacity and things like that. I can even go create another one, bring it up to the front maybe a little bit, go up to uh, my effects, uh, effects and presets. I'm going to attach a, uh, a box blur to it, just a quick quick blurring. Um, so you can see here, just adjust that. Um, and then maybe uh, we need to bring the opacity down a little bit, maybe it's a little bit too. But again, um, these are all just duplicates of the original, instances of the original. I can it's still retaining all the animations from the original. So it's a little more interesting. Got something going on here. Uh, what we can do next is maybe um, go back to my project panel. I'm going to import a half-life picture. Try it. Try it here. Here's my here's my oops. Here's my my intro panel, right? So boom, a little quick little animation, my boot up sequence. So 
that's a little boring. Um, let's, let's, let's build on a little bit more. Um, uh, while I did build this, again, I said I, I built this object in Illustrator. I didn't need to. It's a very basic shape that we could have just built in um, After Effects, but for the sake of argument, that's what we did. Uh, what I am going to do is um, let's go forward a little bit, get to the end of it. Uh, right click new shape layer let's create this little health bar uh, right here sounds good and again when, when you drag in when you create new shapes in after effects uh, right now it's called a rectangle shape layer um, i don't like after effects controlling what i do with my shapes i want to be able to control the anchor points uh, so what you want to do uh, similar to how we broke out that eps earlier i'm going to i'm going to grab this new shape layer tree out the attributes go to rectangle shape path uh, and convert to Bezier path. Basically what that's gonna do is break open the break open the container, the rectangle, and let me give me access to the, to the, the points themselves, the paths. So what I can do, if I, uh, if I press U on my keyboard, U is a, is a hotkey to just show all, all my keyframes in my, uh, on a layer. So I have this keyframe here again from one second to, to two, where it's just opening up. I'm gonna do something similar. Maybe here, I'm not gonna, <coughs> Oh, maybe I'll start my health bar animation here. I'm going to drag it out just a little bit so it doesn't show up. Uh, create a path here. Go forward a little bit. Create another keyframe here. So what I can do is grab this. All right. So now I've got my my window my in window animating in, and then my new shape, my new health bar animating in. Again, this is it's just a linear animation. Super boring. Uh, you can see here how it's how it's linear. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to Keyframe Assistant on that last frame and just really crank out, crank up that animation, really snap it in. Oh, that feels good. Oh man, let me tell you. Phew. All right. Um, so along with the, uh, the shape attributes and the um, the, uh, the the path attributes, you can edit um, and keyframe animate. You can basically animate and keyframe any attribute that you that you have that you can edit within the within the program so i'm going to edit the, the fill color here so right now it's starting at white uh, i think uh, maybe a red color at the beginning uh, and as it animates in um, when it gets to the end i'm going to add another keyframe and we're going to make it green basically telling the user you know when your health bar is small it's going to be red when it gets to green uh, it's it's full right a little bit of reinforcement there boom um, you don't need to ease in uh, these kind of adjustments, opacity adjustments, color adjustments. Um, noticing the easing to a user is a little bit more difficult, um, so it doesn't make a big difference, but for the sake of uh, continuity, let's uh, crank up the easing of this one too. Boom. I'm gonna hop back real quick. Again, it's an instant reflected on the main canvas, all those duplicates. There's a nice glow on there um, from, the, from the, the Z depth layer that we built that we blurred out. It's all like immediately reflected. It's, it feels so good to to work uh, in 2D. If I jump back in here and then have your stuff set up in 3D and it just like it just works. It feels really good <clears throat> as a UI designer. Like seeing your stuff animated, you don't have to explain it to somebody. That's just uh, it, it turns you into a concept artist. Really, Let's save this project. Save this project. All right, we're almost there. Let's let's do one more thing. Let's see. Let's add a uh, new text layer. Let's call it health. Oh, there's a Half-Life font for you right there. Let's see. Oh, that's real Half-Life-y. Come on, don't embarrass me now. Give me something good. Yes. Okay. All right, so what we'll do with this one is, uh, let's see, as this animates in, maybe we can start the frame here. Let's just do opacity. We're gonna have it like flash in, that real retro, real amateur move. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, create a keyframe for opacity. We're gonna uh, <clears throat> just step forward a few frames, uh, drag that on this opacity to zero. Uh, you'll see that, that I'm not, making explicit keyframes but once you make a single keyframe on a uh, on an attribute any any adjustments you make to that attribute will automatically add keyframes into it right so i'm not actually saying like add keyframe here all i'm doing is, is adjusting the attribute 
Um, this is good and bad. Sometimes you forget you have keyframes somewhere and you just start, you just start playing with it and editing it. And then all of a sudden you have keyframes all over your timeline because you forgot that you had a keyframe in one place. It freaking sucks. Um, okay, so now I've just uh, adjusted. So I have it just basically just hopping in and out like this. So now as it comes in, boom, it's, it's your 1999 boot up matrix animation. Feels good. I'm gonna hop back to my main comp, and again, boom, just right there. Oh, it feels good. Uh, so that's just of it. I mean, that's that's the basics of, of bringing in an object from an external uh, vector program, and um, just creating real basic animations. You know, again, this isn't pretty, but understand the flow of how things work. Um, I think it, it's it's gonna. If you don't already know it, it 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 honestly changes your entire career, changes the entire game of like what you're able to do. Um, there you go.